frontier. Ladies and gentlemen, the following podcast is Wrestling Death and is scheduled for one hour. Maybe more. It has no real time limits making their way into your ears. First, from a place called Garniston, he is the Pyramid. It's going to be the funniest show ever because I'm all about the comedy and the money, money. baby. How much you can pay? And his partner, Fela Tapendo Stevenson. From Mexico City to Beef Community Centre, I've got stories that are going to blow your mind. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Wrestling Daft, the world's best wrestling podcast. We are your hosts. We are Rab Florence, that's me talking, and also... Great, Owen, it's good to have you back, Mr Robert Florence, who is the old teeth? And the teeth are feeling good. I was off last week with Toothache. I know you probably never listened to it because I wasn't on the show, but just to let you know what happened, uh, I had really bad toothache and cause of the coronavirus just now, the dentists can't drill, they can't get the drills out. So basically you just have to suffer until it goes away, until your teeth die. So my teeth are all dead now, so it's all good. John, uh, thanks for filling in uh, no while I was there. And, you know, I'm saying me and Grado are a host of the show at the top of the show here, but we also have to include John here. He's a key part of the Wrestling Daft team. He's, you know, he's doing his stuff on the sister show, The Marks, which you can always catch. It's, that goes weekly as well. It's a great show, fantastic show. I've been, actually, while I was after the toothache, I was catching up on uh, every episode of The Marks. I listened to all of them. Great stuff. What fantastic. was your favourite bit? What was your favourite bit, Rob? My favourite bit? It's quite a bit of bit you were uh, doing. That. See, I've been loving the fantasy booking stuff. It's so funny, oh, man. Yeah. I just love following along with that. It's absolutely, f- absolutely fantastic. I have to say, you're a good fantasy booker, John. All right, what was your favourite booking? It's got to be uh, the, the, the most recent one. Well, no, the, the, uh, you might not remember, but one of the earliest ones you did was absolutely fantastic. The one where you had the boy going or the the big boy in the thing. So it was it was all it was definitely that was the way I would have played it. Uh, Grado, how are you? I'm all right. It's good to see you back, John. Last week he it was it was funny because I've never actually seen him presenting mode before. I was like, you take you take the reins, and it was. Uh, it was funny, man, right? Because he's just told me there that he's had some complaints about how much he swore last week as well. But it was, it was hilarious. He was like a an apprentice on a show on STV two or something like that, an intern. The way he was going, and before the an email here for Gemma. It's a girl, Gemma. It's a girl. Okay, Gemma. We don't usually many girl fans. In fact, that's the point. If there's any girl fans listening to the show, why don't you message us at, at Wrestling Daft? Next up, there was Monday Night Raw, and it was funny, man. Fantastic. Thanks, Grado. No, I know. I, I noticed that myself when I was listening to it. I was thinking to myself, uh, he's very sweary as well, isn't he? Very sweary, isn't he? He's a sweary he boy. I d- he's I d- very deep swear in the house like that, John. I, I, I have to apologise. We did have a complaint. I've already apologised on the Mark show for this. Brought Stevie, uh, who messaged it, quite rightly so, um, pointed out that my language was a little coarse um, last week. Uh, I apologise for that profusely. He compared uh, my swearing to The Sopranos. I didn't realise I was doing it. I apologise. I was just trying to be, you know, as cool as Rab. But Rab don't Rab, I? Yeah. Don't you be dragging our show back to the attitude era, mate. This is PG era wrestling <laughs> stuff here. Uh, let's, let's have a look. At, watch that, John. I want to catch up on what's been happening. Let's say uh, catch up on some correspondence to see what the punters uh, have been saying. Now, Chris got in touch. He says, hi, on your last episode, Grado mentioned Robbie E being a dick. Can you elaborate on this? I thought he had a good look on TNA, wrestled well, but I always thought, and maybe Grado agrees, that he was a backstage fud. Now, before you continue with this, Grado, Robbie E, was he the one that was on the Titan Games? With the Rock? And Titan, the, the, I, so he was on Titan Games, and which... He was rotten on it, by the way. I, was, I never watched it. He only told me that I was on the show. Or somebody he, had told me. I think it was Adam Shame, actually. Adam Shame told me. Uh, you were in Robbie E's opening thing. His wee yep, montage. You were in there. But, and he was rotten. He was weak. Right, I never, as I say, I never watched it, but it was, what, what did that message say? I always thought that he had, say that again, he had the what? Well, Chris th- Chris thinks that Robbie E had a good look on TNA and wrestled well, um, but he always thought, he had always had a feeling, and maybe Grado agrees that he was a backstage fud. Was he a BSF, Grado? I he was, Robbie's a wanker, but um, the, because the, the first time that I met him, I think um, he had missed the first tour that I would ever been on, and then, 
I caught with him for the first time on the UK tour and he just threw daggers at me all day. And we were all back at the hotel room that night. And I was like, what's your problem with me, Biggie? He says, I'm the funny guy here. I'm the comedy guy. What? All right. But then everybody told me that he always he didn't like any noobs, which is funny because that rubbed off in me. The MD knew came in, I'd go, you think you are? What's your game? What are you playing at? But he actually admitted himself when I, he says to me, like, and it's funny because JBC this last week, he goes, why do a lot of people, a lot of people look at you, they see you, like, the, for example, GB hated me as well. He says that everybody he shows me to, they always instantly hate me. They instantly hate me. They go on my profile picture, see my profile picture, they don't like me. But then I turn them around. He says, well, it must be some sort of disease I've got or whatever. But anyway, um, he said that he didn't like me, but then after a couple of weekends, he did like me. But is it funny, mi- I, bought, I bought his shirt last week on WWEshirt.com. Is it maybe because you I remember way back at the start, you intimidated quite a lot of people when you were a lowlander. <laughs> and maybe there's just a wee bit of carry off for that lowlanders era, you know what I mean? And that kind of old school, and I did have that sort of mentality, I get that. I mean, I remember Sha saying the first time he ever met me, he looked at my profile picture and I had a picture of me holding Fighting Spirit magazine and he thought, what a strub. This guy, I hate this guy. But then he stuck on the British wrestling and he liked me. So, this is it. They just don't, they just don't get it. Because you're real. That's one of the things as well. This is one, uh, an important thing to say about, about Grado that a lot of people out there don't really realise. Grado wasn't really an act. Like, Grado wasn't a term. It's not like Grado goes out and does his thing and does his promos and does his thing in the ring and stuff like that and then he's a completely different guy behind the scenes where he's like, he's actually a really serious guy. You know, sometimes you get with comedians and stuff like that, you go, we actually meet him in real life, he's a bit of a downer and stuff like that. Grado's pretty much just Grado. Aye, uh, that's what I hate. As it always say, your gimmick should be yourself turned up to 11. Mm. Quite hard when you're, you know. Well, your gimmick is yourself turned up to 11, but you yourself are at 10. So you're, you've only turned it up by like one. one. You've only turned it up by one, mate. No, let's see what a, one of our patrons, Jim, has got to say for himself. He says, hi. I know it was a few weeks ago that you were talking about how when you found out that wrestling wasn't real, but I was talking with my sister about it and she reminded me of this story. WrestleMania 9 had just happened and I was given a very grainy copy of it recorded by a cousin of mine. I remember watching it and being a big Bret Hart fan at the time. I was excited and a bit scared that he was facing Yokozuna in the main event. Right? I couldn't wait to finish my dinner of a Heinz spaghetti and potato waffles. Right? So after my mum had given up trying to get me to clear my plate, she took it away and I sat cross-legged in front of the TV for the big event. After watching it and seeing that Yokozuna had cheated to the hitman, I stormed off in the foulest of moods, slamming my bedroom door and sulking on my bed. My sister, after laughing at my exit for a while, came to see me in my room to find that I was writing a strongly worded letter to Jack Tunney, including the phrase, that cheating fat bastard, and fucking dick, Mr. Fuji. (laughs) After saying that, I I can't send, after saying that he couldn't send a letter because it was rude, and no actually telling him that it was all work, she convinced me not to send it. She also reminded me the only address I could find to send it to was an old WWE magazine address. So I could only imagine what the person receiving this letter would have thought if they'd opened this foul-mouthed scroll from an angry 10-year-old. That's sweet, isn't it? It's a sweet that's story. A I love story. that kind of story. That's beautiful. Can you see my dog button? Just a wee bit. Get uh, We heard that, mate. But, uh, but I just wanted fair play to your sister for, um, for no smarting you up in, in, a, in a brutal way. You know what I mean? It's a lovely story. Keep them coming, guys. Keep them coming. No, we were looking for more girls to get in touch. Well, it says girls here down in John's notes, but I'm going to say we were looking for more women to get in touch after Gemma came on last week to talk about a love of wrestling and Emma Louise has been in touch as well. Um, Emma Louise says, just listen to the podcast. I'm a girl who listens to your podcast every week. So I'm going to say that and I'll change this. Just listen to the podcast. I'm a woman who listens to your podcast every week. Absolutely love wrestling. And Wrestling Daft is by far my favourite wrestling podcast. Um, Cultaholic is shite, she says. And <laughs> Chris Jericho's show is also shite. And Steve Austin's one's shite. As her saying that, not me. Thank um, you, last, Yeah, thank you very much. Last week we talked about Kenny Miller's appearance at a WWE show. Oh, did you? <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, but that, I don't know if you ever, you ever saw this, Rob, or were you at the show? You, you go to no. quite a lot of the shows at the Hydro, didn't No, you? I don't think so. I think no, um, Kenny Miller appeared in the ring. Was he was he in the ring? 
well, I, what for what I saw, it was like a wee tiny clip on Twitter. He was in the ring. And I, I felt that he would have been half cheered, half booed. But according to this correspondence, it's not the case. Well, Big Andy's been in touch. Said he was at a WWE show with Kenny Miller. He was a guest timekeeper, and pretty much the whole crowd cheered him, bar me because I'm a Kelly fan. No. <laughs> I can understand that a wee bit because here's here's the thing. I'm trying to think if I was at a show and if a Rangers player appeared or something, you would cheer them because it's like it's a thing. It's a hometown guy who's a wrestling fan. You're just happy with that. It's, football colours don't matter. I but we were talking about last week that this is a guy who's a, who's had mayor facing heel turns in the big show. Ah, true. That's Do you know what I mean? True. So That's we were kind of. What would have been the reaction been regardless if he... Because, you know, he played for Rangers and Celtic, so but that's cleared up King Kenny Miller. They should get... Mo Johnston then an appearance would be good just to see what that reaction would be. They should Every time a WWE comes, they should just get some divisive uh, Celtic or Rangers player into the ring just to see what the reaction is. I mean, I'm surprised that... Vince doesn't do that. Just like, let's let's wind them up, man. Let's get... Let's have Brian Loudrop in there and get him winching Paolo Di in the middle of the ring. <laughs> I mean, uh, a brand panties say, match between Brian Loudrop and Paolo Di Canio just to see what the reaction is. I was going to say maybe Ian Durant and Aberdeen at the Aberdeen House show or something like that, but that would be beautiful. I think uh, Loudrop wins in Di Canio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were talking about a Janny gimmick. We had Janny listener Sandy last week. Well, I was near they too well, and several people got in touch. They say it's already been done. Tyler Breeze dressed up as one. Jim Duggan did it in WCW, and people saying that Perry Saturn had a claim when he was cutting about with Moppy. I suppose. I suppose there's a bit. Yeah, he wasn't a Janny though. That doesn't count. And it's obviously a shoot Janny we had on last week, wasn't it? Johnny was a good guy, wasn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. We were just talking, Rab. That a Janny gimmick would be quite a good gimmick for a wrestler. What do you think, Rab? He's got the keys for the locker rooms, Nora, and he's like, you're so making a mess of that locker comes. room and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. He's putting a light suit in the stadium. Everybody him now, Nora, and I and <laughs> sawdust on the blood and all that. Yeah, see, well, we missed you last week. We didn't think of this shit. We were just thinking about sand and ringing the bell and that. That was right. a good one, ringing the bell. Ah, yeah, good bell. But, he get, but Sandy told us that that is... No longer a, a thing. Janice don't ring the bell anywhere. It's automatic. Which it's can't... automated and it's automated. Automated. So. It's all been kicking off after Gradle was looking for COVID-related wrestling puns. Do I hear them, Rab, since you're missing? Okay, let's hear your, your puns. Is this your Tyler one? Tyler Sneeze. Tyler Sneeze, good. Spike Dudley. The Flu Day. Matt Riddled. Jim <laughs> Herd Immunity. Okay. Isolation of Domination. Outbreak Jack. Rated R-Rate Superstar. And bash at the le- Jason Leach. Um, great. That's great. I really like it. Let's see what the punters are joining me this week. Graham says Nation of Isolation. Which is kind of just mine. It's a reverse. It's a bit, right. Alistair says Rate Mascario. <laughs> Sorry, Mascario. that. Lucha House Party Interrupted by the Polis. What? And the Ayatollah of fucking Corona. What's the Lucha House Party? I don't get that. Lucha House Party Interrupted by oh! the Polis. Slow. Sorry, mate. That was a good Andy answer. Muirhead says NHS test and Tracy Smothers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pandemic pandemic Foley mm. and Fever Marie. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I like that one. Stephen says R number truth. <laughs> that's better than R. That's it. That's the one. That's good. China virus. <laughs> what? China virus. Okay. That's what Trump calls it, right? The China virus. I know. China. Jesse, the antibody Ventura. Oh, that's, oh, yeah, that's oh, a yeah. belter. That's, that's a belter. And COVID cabana. I love it. I love it. Yeah, Jordy says, I can't think of any COVID related puns, but if I remember correctly, there's been plenty of folk in wrestling who knew about COVID years before. For example, they had Undertaker versus Yokozuna in a coffin match at Survivor Series. <laughs> Survivor Series 94. There was a cracking can he be in two meters strap match between Savio Vega and Stone Cold that's stuck in your house at 8pm where they put the light eight, we're stuck in your house where they put the lights out at 8pm for 10 minutes to go outside to clap for the NHS what is he talking about and my favourite match growing up had to be HBK versus Undertaker at Bad Blood the very first hell and self isolation match where the Undertaker's quarantined brother had to come in wearing a face mask and <laughs> unplug him from the big red life support machine <laughs> I mean, my God. It's funny, man. It's funny that a guy just sat and came up with it. <laughs> no! <And I laughs> think through it, like, sitting there for like 
tools in his house, these misses uh, like that. Right, are you coming down for dinner? Hold on, hold on. I need, no. get, some, I need to get something for Kane here. Um, <laughs> no, but then he's gone. Come on, have a look at us. What do you think? <laughs> You're listening to this, hen. Right, what do you think of this? A coffin match. Yeah. And Westy, Westy leaves us with this for next week. How are you doing, Westy? She leaves us with this for next week. What is the weirdest dream or nightmare you've ever had featuring, <laughs> featuring another wrestler? Mine was when I had a dream that I was wrestling Big Show. <laughs> and my other one was when Bram chased me with a steel chair. Grado, have you had any weird wrestling dreams? <laughs> I love that. I was wrestling the big. Oh, Louise, that's hilarious. Louise, that's so funny, man. That made me laugh so much. The only, <laughs> the only, um, the only kind of. I've never dreamed of, dreamt about other wrestlers, but I've had that. Your uh, music's playing, and you're like, then a shite or something, and you've not got your gear on, and you need to go, and you're wearing your trackies and stuff like that, which has happened in real life for me as well. Actually, to be honest with you, and I forgot my gear, but I've. I've I've had that kind of recurring dream with the music's playing and I'm nowhere anywhere near the ring and I have to, I have to run. That's quite a kind of... You ever had any wrestling dreams? No, I've had dreams. Uh, I, I do have a version of that dream, though, where it's like you don't know your lines. It's like mm-hmm. action and you don't know any of your lines. Right. And you're it's st- not that you've forgotten your lines. It's just that you've not even, you don't even know that. You don't have no look to them. Aye, that's it. You've not even had a look at the script. <clears throat> no. I've had that before. <clears throat> Nightmare. <clears throat> Nightmare. Johnny, ever, ever had any wrestling-related dreams? Probably one about Lana, but that's probably about it. Oh, he all know, right? Hold on, he all know. He's getting. And if you want, what is he like? He's turning into the wild man of fucking podcasting the past couple of weeks, man. If you want to get in touch with us about any of that, I'll just random wrestling related stuff. Get us on Twitter at Wrestling Daft, on Insta at Wrestling Daft Podcast, just Wrestling Daft on Facebook, or email us at Wrestling Daft at gmail.com. Now, it's that part of the show. Every week, we like to separate the good for the bad and the wrestling. The no having toothache to the having toothache. <laughs> uh, right, what, what, what are we burying and what are we putting out this week? Right, so um, I have watched the top 10 moments for, for Raw. I don't know if there's anything good for that. Nothing I can bury. I've been reading a lot of stuff about Lars Sullivan. He seems to never be at the... The dirt shits these days, he's becoming quite a character to keep an eye on, as you know. Oh, yeah, he sure is, all right. Mm-hmm. Well, tell the audience, what's he been up to? Mm-hmm. Well, apparently, we're, we're seeing screen grabs. We're hearing, you know, he's been quite um, homophobic online. That, 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 not sorry, that had been uncovered before previous tweets where he had yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. done some homophobic slants, homophobic, homophobic slants. It turns out he's been involved in a sort of, um, Pornography? Have you heard about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about this. Aye. It was, it was, it's, it's quite, you know, it's, it's ironic, isn't it? Um, it's a difficult it like one. A... It's a difficult one to discuss, isn't it? Aye. Do we? Do we? I don't think we should be discussing this. Huh? What do you think? Oh no. Well, let's move. Let's move on. <laughs> I mean, I think it's fine if the listeners get themselves in trouble and, and there's legal action upon themselves. But I don't think. Would I get in trouble for what I've just said? I no, know. definitely no. Definitely no. Right. Uh, I, I want. To... Back, I, I need. I need to fucking. I need to get Grant the bar back, man. <laughs> you need that lowlander's attitude back. The lowlander swagger needs to come back. Aye. Mate. I, I, I want a. I'm going to put over Lana one in the battle royal for the title shot on it. And here's why I want to put it over because I've been because it just amuses me. It amuses me when for weeks and weeks when the storyline's been developing, you've got all these fans going like that. Oh, Vince is getting her put through tables because the big man's went to AEW. That's Vince getting back at him by getting her to put... And it's... How how daft are fucking wrestling fans? Mm-hmm. He does Sometimes. not give a fuck about that. How daft are wrestling fans? I think... As Lana went through a, a, went through a table again because Vince is annoyed about... He'll do that to her every week now. Did they get... Come on! Get a grip, man. And these are all people that think they're in the know as well. They're all people that think they, they, they've seen behind the curtain that are saying this stuff. I daft these, man. Come on. <laughs> um, so I like I like to see a storyline developing that you know that that, that proves uh, that Vince doesn't give up. Vince doesn't give a fuck who goes. Oh, what was the deal, Rob? The days of Vince caring where guys go is over, man. Aye. Sorry, no, great. Sorry, great. Oh, no, saying. I was just wondering because I saw the top ten moments. Was she you know initially teaming with Natalia, and then they sort of 
split up at the end, but then was there a kind of impromptu battle royal for a number one contender? Was that the deal? No, no, no. She was in the battle royal way, um, Natty, and Natty had won it, it looked like, but they'd forgot about Lana, and she came in, she did a wee bonk, and knocked her out, and won it, and then Natalia was like, we're finished, it's over. Right, right, okay, okay. Okay, cookies, that's cleared that up for me. So, I think Lana will maybe win the title, I've got a feeling. I think, right. Yeah, right, uh, let's see what the punters are saying. Rico wants to put us splitting the new day between brands for Big E's sake. Seems a risky but interesting decision. It's sad to see them apart, but it makes sense to have E on his own if he's chasing the Universal Championship. Certainly he's a different dynamic to when Kofi went after the title. Kofi did it with support. Can Big E do it on his own? Does E want to do it on his own? He lives in hope that this has been thought through, but it is WWE. And he wants to bury whoever texted the Young Bucks back for Hangman's phone on BTE. But I don't know what he's referring to there. But this guy is obviously keeping very up to date with all the um, all the YouTube content and stuff like that from AEW, and is deep into the storyline. So AEW doing a good good job there uh, with Rico. Uh, how do you think about Big E being split up for the rest of the new day? What do you, you should take one out, boys. Well, I was kind of interested in it, but then I watched them on Talking Smack, and apparently they've not been together anyway since February. They've not tagged in a year. But yep. the first thing I did think about was Jura because I remember you saying here that you would like to see him. Get a, get a rocket strapped to his ass and go for the, the heavyweight title. And I definitely think he's got that in him. So it'll be interesting to see you, be honest with you. I want to see him against Roman. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. Uh, Dan wants to put over Toru Yano's matches and G the G1 never fails to entertain. I'd love to see a Grado and Yano match one day, just pure fun. Would you be interested in that, Grado? Do I Google? Grado's just having a Google. Yano's the kind of comedy guy in... The- Oh, that's the guy that's always with Cabana, isn't it? I, I'd love to work that yeah. guy. I would love to work that guy, definitely. Uh, but Dan wants to be Barry splitting up the new day. Like also, Brown. hold on, I'd rather tag with him than, than wrestling, because it uh, just makes no sense. What well, six man, that would be me, Cabana, and that guy. That'd be cool. Um, and he wants to be Barry splitting up the new day across brands. I suppose it's better than them turning on each other, though. Craig wants to put a Ricochet's Eddie Guerrero tribute on Raw with a steel chair. Great wee spot that worked so well in the match. Oh, I got a wee good. issue with that. I, 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 as a face, I don't. I didn't really like it. I feel as if that's got to be, I think that's better used when a bad guy does it to a good guy. You get what I mean by that? Good point, mate. Good point. That's a kind of um, that's a kind of Cornette style point you're making there about the kind of logical. I, I think it makes sense. I think you're cheating. right. But it's always good to see a wee bit of a nod to Eddie Guerrero. You've got to remember that Eddie Guerrero, as a babyface, did a lot of cheating as well, though, mate. I, no, I, de- I definitely agree, but there's a difference between Guerrero and Ricochet. You know that there's anything wrong with Ricochet. I just think I've, uh, any time I've done that... You try that, to get a match with Ricochet. Do you know what? You try, I what, you try to work yourself into a match with Ricochet here. It was going to happen at one point. It was going to happen at one point, but then... Um, <clears> it didn't. He's a very similar style of workers. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Craig wants to bury Lars Sullivan being back in the telly. Shite wrestling, shite human being. Get him to fuck. Right. That's the kind of thing John would say. Get him to fuck. I don't swear anymore. Um, Neil wants to put over the Inside the Ropes magazine. Signed up after listening to last week's Mark's episode. And I've just finished the first issue. A true spiritual successor to the late great Power Slam. I want to bury younger me for giving away my entire Power Slam collection during a clear out. What a jabroni. So Matt, I got the Inside the Ropes magazine as well. I liked the look at it as well. It felt like I kind of had a 90s feel to it. Um, only problem was there wasn't much. In fact, I don't think there was anything at all today with British wrestling, but that's fair enough. That's the way they want to go. Um, but with regards to the Power Slam clear out, it's funny, man, because I know what this guy means, but if you go on eBay, you can get all Power Slams for like six, seven pound. Now, I know you'd probably rather have your own collection, but it's it's amazing. I mean, I've got programs up here for it's weird, right? I've got old Rangers programs for like 1972, old firm, and they are in truly mint condition, and I've got them for four or five pounds. And it always ceases to amaze me that somebody's kept a magazine for other for years to sell it for less than a tenner. It's a fucking point. People just are getting desperate though, aren't they? Financially and, and the other things they love need to go. Um and <laughs> they come into your collection and you're just like He's daft bastards fucking selling this stuff. It's fucking good quality as well. I got guys probably did now. I guy sold it to you. Um, nice to wrestlers wants to put over the collective shows for this weekend, specifically Joy Janela's Spring Break and Bloodsport. Featured a lot of breakout talent who will likely be signed to major promotions within the next year. And wants to bury WWE for not drafting Andrade. Just send them back to NXT for God's sake. Shut up. Uh, Ross 
send them all this stuff about send them back to NXT send, as if these guys want to go back to NXT well please send me back to NXT please send me back to NXT fuck off <laughs> <laughs> they should send Big Drew Big Drew's doing well isn't he they should send him back to NXT see how much he likes that fuck's sake get a grip man send him back to NXT with fans like that who needs enemies you know what I mean Ross wants to put over Gredo for his interview on the Flip the Mindset podcast well done Gredo I never heard that is that what, what is that um, it's a podcast it was about um, it's kind of about mental health and stuff like that which I've never ever done before so I was only talking about my mom dying and Adrian dying and stuff like that so if you want to hear Sounds like a laugh, mate. Sounds like a good laugh. Oh, right? <laughs> in, uh, is that a comedy podcast? Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's bits and bobs in there, but there is a serious tone to it, Robert, as I say. It's, I've never done it like before, and I've always always get freaked out about talking about serious stuff like that. But um, uh, it's good on you, man. Going it yourself, mate. You'll we'll be there all day. Ah, oh, fuck it. It'd need to be a long episode if I went on it, mate. Be sectioned after it. <laughs> um, Keith wants to put you on... <laughs> Uh, Jericho being brilliant for the last 30 years in wrestling. 30 years of wrestling, mate. Whew. See if you had to... See if, Here's an interesting question, Gredo. What age would you need to be still wrestling it to have wrestled as long as Chris Jericho? Oh, two. So what's that? What was your first match? Well, actually, right. my first match was in 2004. So I was 18. So it was 18, I had 30. 48. 48, I'd be 48. Oh, you, you'll do that, wouldn't you? You'll still wrestle. It. You'll wrestle at 50. Oh, fucking right, I will. I don't do much to nudge. You know what I mean? I'll still be doing that when I'm 50. Geez it. Anytime, man. No bumps. What's um, the elbow? Keith also wants to put all the clown that took... When he says the clown, by the way, he's not criticising the guy. The guy was actually a clown, right? He was dressed as a clown. Also Sorry. put over the clown that took that Judas effect. Did you Did you see the clown I at the party taking the Judas effect? I did. Fucking hell, that was... That was a belter, wasn't it? They, they, they always, wrestlers always do that. They always do that with the, with the kind of non-wrestlers. They'll, they'll protect the wrestler, but they'll just lay it into the pair wee fucking strob that's been paid 10 bob to do it. Um, I, 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 I would like to think Jericho bought him a wee something after that, a wee bottle of champagne or something. Or, you know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I think Jericho's the kind of guy who would sort out a guy for doing that. For. Thanks, sir. I think so. But once they bury the Jericho tribute party at the end, there was so much more they could have done with that, I think. Missed opportunity. Well, there is a pandemic on and stuff, so it's like... Ben wants to put over Kevin Owens, two great matches on Raw and SmackDown, and put over The Fiend too. I'm liking the stuff with Alexa. I like that as well, Rab, do you? No? Have a guess. I'm going to say, I don't know, I I thought you would have liked it, but you don't like it then? Well, what is that? What's to like? It's different, isn't it? What's that? Is it different? For what? Goths and that. <clears throat> Anti spiders and scary things and stuff like that. Is that not different? I don't know. I thought you'd like it. It's annoying me one person okay. cutting about with a red light on them. Never mind. No, it's two people <laughs> with a red light on them cutting about. It's just, I just kind of feel like, what? what is it? Like, pull the trigger on whatever it is you're doing. Week after week, just having this slow hang me into like, oh, she's cutting about with him now, or she's in the corner, both doing the same thing. They've not done anything with her look. There's no really any real backstory to it. There's no really any explanation to it. Where's the money? As du- as Dusty Rhodes always says, right, any angle, any angle, any idea, any storyline, anything you tell, storytelling-wise, in the world of wrestling, what's selling the tickets? So Alexa is way the fiend now, and they're doing this thing together. What are we building towards? What are we wanting to? What what is the what is what is the point where we're going to go? I need to see this. I need to buy a ticket for this. It's empty. It doesn't have anything yet. There's no, where's the rivalry? Who are they up against? Who are they fighting against? Who's the rivals? Who's the natural rivals in this? What we want to see? Are they even faces or heels? It's hard to say. It's hard to say they're heels. Are they heels? Are they faces? What are they? Where's the money? Where where are the tickets being sold for this? What's the point? Yeah, right, it's a lot of shit, and I was just kind of showing off that I watched it, and I just said that's good, isn't it? I, didn't I think the problem that this is the problem that fucking Bray Wyatt always has, though, is that you know he's 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 such a good performer and promo guy and stuff like that that they lean so hard into that they kind of forget that fundamentally he still has to sell wrestling matches. It still has to be like you know it has to build up towards two guys in a ring or him and Alexa. What are they going to start doing mixed tag matches? What what are we building towards? I don't see the fucking point. We seek long at him shortly, won't you? And then anyway, Ben wants to bury splitting up the new day and making Lana the challenger for Asuka. Surely going to be a quick match then the submission game over finito birthday killed pish. <laughs> Woo! 
Anyway, you can get me a wrestling daft at patreon.com forward slash wrestling daft. I Gredo, you tell them the tiers. Uh, tell them about the three tiers we've set up. It's almost a wee bit like the three tier system that England has for coronavirus, the alert system. So on you go. Tier one is a cruiserweight champion. That's four dollars a month on that. You get a patron only chat community. You're going to get ad free versions of the episodes, early access, you're going to get random bonus content, video version of the Marks podcast, and you get to vote on what you want to see featured on the list of wrestling daft and for the Marks Fantasy Book in Ireland. On tier two, that's $10 a month, you get everything in tier one as well as a video version of the podcast each week. There's a bonus episode once a month up there now, you can get Rab on wrestling, the first two parts of the Grado It's Yourself story. And we were going to record this last week, however, um, you did have two fake lab, but we are going to be doing the RF. RF stands for Rob Flaunch, Rob yep. RF Shooter Review. I was going to interview you, so we're going to get probably that done in the next week. Plus this week we're going to get brand new monthly shows from the Marks, the Dafties, that's what they're calling it. And we're going to be talking about the best and worst wrestlers, the best match and best moment of the month. And you can also join our Patreon pay-per-view parties. Tier 3, you're going to be paying $20 a month. You get everything in Tier 1 and 2, as well as a free Wrestling Daft t-shirt, um, but you must sign up for three months. Plus, you get to feature on one of our shows as one of our marks, or do a run-in on the show. So, if you fancy that, becoming one of our patrons, sign up at patreon.com forward slash Wrestling Daft. It was we would like to welcome you to the roster. It's the part of the show as we invite you, the listeners, to do a run-in. Come on to the show, ask what you want. You might want to get our thoughts on the WWE Draft. They'll just want to know who has the worst banter backstage. Well, this week, let's welcome the show a man who provides most of the content for this show, to be honest, and a former two-time, at least two-time, uh, for two-time listener of the week, Mr. Bronze Cello. Oh, he's got... Um... Would you call him on his profile picture? Him that does he really like me and I don't like him. There he is. There oh, no, he is. Hello. He's uh, looking good. Look, he has dressed up for the occasion. Uh, it's great to put a yeah. face to the name, mate. Oh, Chips Cheese and Donnie t-shirt as well. Get in it's there, man. It's a nice man. t-shirt. That's a nice t-shirt. Isn't it? That's cool. Uh, so, where are you? Are you for, are you for Aberdeen? Um, I'm up that way. I'm from Elgin. Right. So we're getting closer here for connections to Bingo Balance here. What do you reckon? This is kind of his neck of the woods. Well, it's his territory. He's, he's from uh, it's Northern Ireland, kind of thing, but aye, aye. I'm reckoning once we get back going, I'm going to get through WrestleZone and I'm going to go and see the legend himself. I need to go and see Bingo. I mean, I wonder I can't if he believe knows. We've, why we've still not got him in this show. I can't believe it. We need to get Bingo Balance on this show. I love how he, he just no sells it. He's never ever tweeted me. He's never messaged me. He just, do you know what I mean? He just takes it. Just He's no interest. It. I don't know if there's heat there. or. I mean, he is probably our favourite wrestler. Without a doubt, a right. favourite wrestler. So how you doing? What's your, what's your real, your given birth name, mate? Um, so my name's Paul. Um, I'm doing all right. Just uh, keeping busy with work and everything at the minute. Just trying to watch as much wrestling as possible. There's there's just so much content out there at the moment to try and keep up with. A lot of good companies putting out some good shows, even though, you know, reduced crowds and empty arenas. It's it's a good time to be a fan. Um, you know, like everyone's pretty much shut down. We're filming fresh content every week. You know, can't complain as a fan. So, who's your favourite, mate? Are, are you like John? Is it Lana? <laughs> Lana. <laughs> Lana's John's favourite wrestler. <laughs> um, I, I don't really have a favourite. I'm I'm glad that Drew's over there and he's flying the flag for us. Um, you know, he's he's doing some great things over there at the minute. Um, seeing him winning that rumble, you know, um. It's brilliant to have. It's a brilliant to have a Scottish guy that that's that good, up on top, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, especially you know we're a bit of a laughing stock when it comes to like you know football and stuff. Like I, I don't follow the football, um, but you know everyone takes a piss out of us for that. So right. aye, you know. we were talking Rab last week about um, the the Drew documentary on the network. Did you manage to catch that? I've not uh, watched it yet. No, I've not watched. It. I've heard it's really good though. Superb. Did you see it, yeah. Bronze? It's, it's one of the best things I've seen on the network, to be honest. Um, you know, seeing all the old footage from when he started out, the, the ICW matches, seeing the, the black label coming out at Shug's house party. You know, Gredo, you were in that match. Um, you know, when, when Shah turned babyface, you know, if you want to use that term. Right. And, you know, that's some match. That, that's probably one of the best matches I've actually seen live. Really? The one with Bram and it was a big kind of six-man type thing? What was it? A five-man? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, he ran, ran through past through it, didn't he? Did you see that? He actually shoot, um, fucking lost consciousness. So he did. 
I don't know if it affected the match. I just remember he, he kind of crashed out. I don't know who was putting, who had a hold on him, but I remember he was like fucking. I think it was a there was, was a botch to it because was it in a hold? He passed out. I I don't know if he was meant to tap and he just he was he passed out. It was weird. I've just got this memory backstage. Of everybody arguing after that match. <laughs> a day, a day. I don't I don't remember exactly what happened, but I uh, that was a good that was that was at the first hydro because I remember. Again, morning always not getting the music, but it was still that was a good buzz. Of Hydro that was a year after Drew. But going back to the the Drew documentary, mate, Rabbit's brilliant. Conscience is in it. Conscience is in Conscience, it. Conscience, there's just a slight cut because Drew's first match was against Conscience, and it showed you right. kind of like during the day in Linwood, which was was amazing. it was it Con and his white and his yeah. White I think he was. I I it was his, he was he was being conscious. He was all conscious up, um, but. It was amazing. They had like footage when he went down to FWA. They had footage for um, BCW training school. They had footage for the Jake Snake Roberts seminar that I was talking about a couple of weeks ago. I don't wow. know who's got that footage, but I need that footage, man. I want to, I want to see uh, how if I look I had back. I guess I'd probably say it was Davy Wilson because um, he gets a fan cue at the end. I I know he did provide a, he probably provided a lot of stuff, but I don't think he because he wasn't in, he didn't go to the, that training seminar. But I would imagine that he did provide quite a lot of stuff. I noticed that he did get a fight and fill with his own. He actually told me that David Wilson got a thank you for it. But, um, did Jake the Snake maybe film it himself? <laughs> Just to kind of, so he could remember where he'd been. <laughs> I don't think, I, and I, do, I think if he actually showed him that footage, he still wouldn't remember that day. It's bloody amazing, isn't it? I need to watch, I need to watch that. I need to catch up on stuff. I had really bad toothache. I had really bad toothache, Paul. Uh, um, how is and, the tooth? You all right? It's all right. It was actually two teeth as well, so it was like it's all right. It's eased half and but it will come back. It will make a comeback. You know what I mean? It will do a zombie set up at some point in the middle of the night and um, sort me out. I'm sure. So, uh, so what promotion is your? If you could only watch one promotion, because I know you're a guy that likes to keep up with all of them, right? But see if they all had to go, and you could only watch one promotion at the minute. Who would it be? The show of the week at the minute, it has to be SmackDown. It's, it's definitely putting out the best content. Um, Probably a toss up between them and AEW, and it, you know, for doing empty arena shows, Impact's putting out some great, Mate, great stuff. Took the words out my mouth. I was on the UKFF the other day. Everybody's saying, "Can we finally get this? Uh, can I stink that TNA's go? Impact's apparently knocking it out of the park right now, and the Rock's going to be bound for glory." Oh yeah, um, he's he's doing uh, Ken Shamrock's induction, isn't he? You see that? Is he? Brilliant! Yeah, <laughs> it was amazing, man. Because Ken Did Shamrock, Shamrock asked him on Twitter. Aye, aye, mm-hmm. aye, and The Rock said absolutely no problem, big man, because I did see Shamrock tweet and I went, oh my god, I hope The Rock sees this man, I hope The Rock will be well yeah. after they'll end up getting fucking, I don't know, who'd, Ryan Shamrock to fucking introduce someone or whatever, but he replied. I don't think Ken Shamrock would have asked if he didn't think The Rock would say I, though, know what I mean? Apparently they were big pals when they first started it, so aye. it sort of makes It means a lot, and it, choosing the person. Here's a question, Gredo, mm-hmm. what would I when you ultimately get entered into a Hall of Fame, right? Mm-hmm. Um, who would do your induction? Oh, probably Shah Noam. Who would do what yours? You need, you need to pick one, mate. Uh, oh, it's a tough one because Shah's going to listen to us. Uh, so I'll say Shah because us, he listens and Noam because he doesn't. That's, that's probably go for Shah. Right. Aye, aye. Noam's okay. never going to find out about this. Mate, I will never get inducted into a wrestling Hall of Fame, so I don't need to worry about it. But if I did, um, and if he was still alive, it'd probably be Jimmy Snooker. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be inducted by murderers, usually. <laughs> usually that's my thing. Paul, if you were inducted into a wrestling hall of fame, right, who would you want to do your induction? You can ask anybody you want. So who, who would you want it to be? It would have to be probably Bruce Pritchard, and only for the fact that he's my first wrestling memory. Um, when my folks got Sky, my dad, he was like, oh, you've got to check this out. Like, you'll love this, Paul. So he shows me his superstars, and it was the Brother Love Show, and it was Jake the Snake Roberts, the Big Boss Man, and Ted DiBiase with a million dollar belt in the snake bag. And that is like my first wrestling memory. And I told Bruce and he turned he turned around to me in Orlando and he says, Oh, wait, make me feel old man. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a cause he was he was when when I was a wee guy, he was he was all the WWF, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He was like everywhere. You know what yeah. I mean? He was a big, big uh, player in it. He's so, funny because I, I've got I've get yeah, I've got beef with him though. I mean, I've got, you know, there's heat between me and him because of because of things that he said about a certain wrestler that I'm um a big fanny at the moment, you know what I mean? He said some unkind things about a certain a certain 
guy who I consider a friend now. now that Nick Aldis. Bingo Balance was, was he shooting him No, it was Nick. Balance? It was Nick. And he's a, he's a friend of the show. He's a friend of the podcast. And I thought Bruce Pritchard was extremely ignorant when he said the things about, about Nick, to be honest. Um, okay. what, what, because... what did you make? Did you watch NW Power when it was gone, Paul? Oh, mate, it was probably the best hour of TV in, in the week. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely loved it. And, you know, seeing some of the guys now on AEW, Ricky Starks and then Thunder Rosa coming in. And um, mm-hmm. Nick Aldis was obviously at the last pay-per-view as well. Um, I don't know if they've got like a working relationship, but it's, it's good to see something, you know, e- even though they've kind of shut down seeing their footage on AEW, you know, yeah. m- making them look like a, a good promotion. The series that they were doing and stuff, um, absolutely brilliant. I, I was telling everyone, you know, you've got to watch this, you've got to watch this. It, yeah, it was great stuff. I really miss it. I really miss mm-hmm. it. Great, don't ever watch it. Oh, what well, I don't know. See, you've got an engagement ring. Did you? Oh, it's a, a wedding ring, yeah. Oh, sorry, a wedding ring. Yeah. So, how does your other half feel about you sticking on this wrestling all the time? She's currently studying and um, she's doing a maths degree, so that takes up a lot of her time as well, as, well as her working. Um so whenever so she's hold studying... on, so hold on. So while your wife is studying for her maths degree, you're watching her wrestling? I am, yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful balance there, isn't it? It's a bingo, it's a bingo balance. It's a bingo I would balance. Call it, <laughs> I'd call that a bingo balance. Paul, what questions do you have for us? I've just really got one. Um it's it's not really wrestling related. Um, Good. What's the best bit of advice that you've ever received? Well, that is, uh, I don't know who's to tell me, but plenty of people have specifically said to always be yourself, right? I know that's daft, I know that's nothing, but it's like, I remember, like, for example, I remember speaking to Shawans, right? And he was gone on GMTV the next day to to, to promote World of Sport, and I, and he was like, oh, you know, I'm nervous. And I was like, look, mate, what you need to do is remember who you are, completely be yourself, make an impression as soon as you walk into the room. And I mean, as soon as you walk in, you're probably going to get tainted makeup, go into makeup, and you know, be yourself, be confident, have a bit of, a bit of banter, be confident the way you talk, no too forward, but just like I goes, everybody likes you, you're a, you're a likable guy. Just try and get that across when you're when you're with everybody backstage and why she go on the screen. Because I've always been told that as well. Because I remember even when I started doing the radio a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago, I was we were talking about you know Little Mix and somebody splitting up in Love Island, and that. for a while I would always just kind of pretend I'm interested in it when really I don't give a shit. And they were like, "Well, just be yourself. How do you really feel about?" It? And I just started to say, "Like I don't care about any of this," and I'd maybe go off on a wee tangent. So. I suppose be yourself and I, f- is that, I don't know, is that a good answer? Is that a good question? I don't know. John, I'm like, what do you, do you think that sounds like? You've got to tell me I anyway. Who gave you that advice? I think I gave myself it. Best bad advice I've ever given, I gave it to myself. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling to think of any advice anybody's gave me that's been any help to me at all. Um... But there's plenty of people I know, for example, who I would the last thing I would do them to do is be themselves. Aye. I'd be like, fucking be anybody else other than you. <laughs> 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 um so I don't know. I mean I can't I honestly really can't think of any advice that Oh, this is a shit show. This is turned out. Huh? I think mayor, like maybe it's not so much advice, but definitely what I took from my dad when I was a wee guy. Was Mayor and how he Mayor about how he behaved about the calmness that he behaved with. He was very calm, and even when things were, and even when he was in a bad mood, or there was bad things going on, he never, he never let it come out him and affect everybody else. You know, what I mean, he was a very, very calm and gentle guy. And I think, think, no so much advice, but Mayor just that's the thing. I think all, I've always tried to be um, quite. Calm, even when I'm maybe internally up to fucking high door. I think but that's that. I can definitely that's rubbed off on you, Rob. Sorry to cut you off. I definitely think you day kind of. I think I could tell you the worst news ever, and you'd probably just kind of take a minute to breathe and go, right, it's fine. There's, there's not a woman walking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I need to go as a, as a stalker that's 
I've got a stalker and Right, we'll need to wrap we'll need to wrap us running. <laughs> um Paul, it's been it's been nice to get somebody to come on. Obviously, all the people that have done the run have all been great, but it's nice to get somebody to come on who could quite honestly just host the show themselves, to be ah, honest. You're right. I, get the vibe. I get the vibe that you could just actually host it. So thanks uh, thanks so much for coming on and chatting to us. And thanks for everything that you provide to us. Honestly, we get a laugh Aye. all the time, man. I always look forward to what you contribute to the show, Biggie. Big time, no big time. Thanks, guys. No, no any worries. Day. Thanks so much for jumping on, man. Right, hopefully speak to you again Cheers, soon. Cheers, Bronze. Thank you, my man. Cheers. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye. So thanks to Bronze Cello. And if you want to be on next week's running, best bet is to sign up to our Patreon as our world heavyweight champions get first dibs. Our intercontinental champs get second and cruiserweight champions get third. Get on patreon.com forward slash wrestling daft and get yourself involved. Come on, you can ask us some questions. You just made the list! Right, it's time for a list of wrestling daft. It's every week, right? We hear this. We ask you to vote on your list of wrestling daft, right? You go on our Patreon and, and we tell you, oh, we're going to do this list or that list, and you get to choose which list. It's amazing, but you need to be a patron to do it. But this week, as Dynamite turns one, we asked, would you like us to discuss the best moments from the show so far? Thank God you didn't pick that one, let me tell you, because I'd have been struggling to make a list. Or we had a suggestion from listener Ian Riley who wanted us to discuss who are the best wrestlers at selling in the business and with 63% of the vote, it was the best sellers that won it. Um, so here I'm going to go with my top three best sellers in the history of professional wrestling. Okay, you ready for this? i go for it. Right, so um, oh, I blew my joke. Right, do it. Right, let me try again. Uh, now it's time for my last of top three best sellers. At number one, it's got to be Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. I like it. I like it. I like it. Really good. Right. <laughs> before I do this list, right? Before I do this list, John, who's my number uh, one? Mr. Perfect. Correct. There you go. Right. So there's the. <laughs> there's my. I didn't feel as if there was any point doing a, doing a countdown. Um, because obviously it's Mr. Perfect is my number one. Uh, I'll talk a wee bit more about that in detail here. But my number three. <laughs> Favourite seller of all time. And this is primarily due to how he sells one specific move. Um, and I've been very, very reminded of it recently because there's been a lot of footage circulating at the minute uh, of this stuff. And... Uh, it's, uh, it's The Rock. Um, I love The Rock selling. I love The Rock. My, whenever The Rock fought Stone Cold, it was just so exciting because I knew I would, I would see a new uh, way of selling the stunner. Um, but also, Rock is an underrated uh, seller overall, I would say. I think if you watch a lot of The Rock's uh, matches, he has a very... <clears throat> he's got a style of selling, I would say, that kind of crosses the bridge between, between the... Very, very old-fashioned, 80s-style, almost cartoonish selling and mere modern, kind of realistic selling. And he, and he walked that line beautifully. He could he could swing into the one or the other uh, really well. So that was uh, my number three, is The Rock. Always great facial expressions. The Rock always looked like he was getting a doing when he was getting a doing. And his face, he always looked like he was getting a doing. I, especially as a, as a win, you could um, it was easy to show, to, to give him sympathy for the way he sold. He, you know, you were... When he was getting his ass booted at yep. FDX and Triple H, you were always rooting for old Rocky. My number two. I almost went, kind of put him on the list because, well, well, no, he put too fine a point on it. He kind of put him on the list because he murdered his wife and Wayne, right? But my number two, I have to put him on it because there's something I have to say about it is Chris Benoit. Uh, Chris Benoit always used to blow me away because when we talk about selling, right, what you normally think about when you're talking about selling, I think, is how a, how a wrestler takes a move, how they sell the move that the opponent does to them, right? No, Chris Benoit did that beautifully. But if you go back and watch some Chris Benoit, Benoit matches the new, right, today, what I'd like you to focus on is this. Look at how well Chris Benoit sells his own moves that he does. Every single move that Chris Benoit did looked real. But also, 
every move that Chris Benoit did that had the possibility of causing any pain to him, you could you could see it. So when he did his diving headbutt, he would sell that. He would sell it. A lot of wrestlers nowadays will do a diving headbutt and they won't sell it themselves. They won't do the selling. Um, because they're like, well, this is an offensive move, so it's not hurting me. But Chris Benoit's moved moves many of them. It has moved set hurt him as well. Even the crippler crossface looked like sometimes it was agony for him as uh, well, putting it uh, on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so, so Chris Benoit was selling constantly all the way through the match. You no, know, you know what I mean? And even like we moves when he's putting wee moves on, when you could see him doing a, just a wee bit of submission stuff or a bit of chain wrestling or whatever, you, he was selling every wee wrist lock. He was like, ah, yeah, fucking. He was selling it all. You know what I mean? And, um. And and just that beautiful thing of even the moves he did, he was selling them. You know what I mean? It all looked sore. Oh, it looked sore. Because um, oh, it is sore. Is the truth? Yeah. And my number one, of course, is Kurt Hennig, who um, who just always made people look a million bucks, man. He fought against his matches with Bret Hart, obviously, who, and Bret Hart was a brilliant seller as well. This is a very, very difficult list today. Bret Hart was an absolutely brilliant seller. Who Bret Hart would maybe have been, Bret or Sean would maybe have been my number three if it wasn't he, The Rock I'd put in there. I love the um, chest and the buckle with, with, with Bret Hart. That was always cool. Aye. I, Bret was um, an amazing seller. And But with their matches with Kurt Hennig, Bret made, uh, Kurt Hennig, Mr. Perfect made Bret look like a, like an absolute superstar, like a, like an absolute god in the ring. You you clothesline Mr. Perfect, man. Mm-hmm. Just just give, give Kurt Hennig a clothesline. And that guy, I know people talk about Dolph Ziggler nowadays, about being a big, he is a big athletic seller, like Kurt Hennig was. But it was different when Perfect did it. It was different when Perfect did it because it, it, it had that thing where it was the athletic kind that almost felt like an oversell, but looked real, looked legit as well. Looked like his head had been taken clean off. When he did the anyway, Mr. Perfect's my number one. How many times has Mr. Perfect been my number one in these lists? Loads, loads of times. So anyway, you Gredo, who, uh, big sellers, good sellers. I think when he's on his day, um, in his own form, you can't beat me. I think I'm when I'm on my game, I fucking can sell. That's what I can be asked. Um, You're a seller. You're a seller. I mean, I love selling. I, I, oh, I watch mere wrestling. I watch the selling. I love watching Ricky Martin sell. I love watching Ricky Steamboat sell. I love Flair selling. I love what they eat. Lex Luger. Lex Luger's a great fucking seller. Um, and the modern guys as well. Uh, Dolph Ziggler. Um, RVD you as well. RVD made things look fucking brutal. Brutal. Can I, can I tell you something I find, I, I find really entertaining? See when Lesnar decides to sell. Mate, Lesnar's a great seller. Yeah, see when Lesnar decides to sell, he sells, he sells like a motherfucker, man. Watch, watch his match with Goldberg. The matches with Goldberg, he's selling is amazing. I love studying selling and I love I love getting wee ideas to sell it different. Like, I, on us, I know I put this over every week, but when I take the sweet chin music, I love I love taking that. I love weed bits and bobs. Aye. Shout out to Trent, uh, Trent Seven as well. He's a good seller as well. Um, but aye, I love the selling's the best bit of the wrestling. And that's why... It's a completely dying out. There's no enough breathing space for, for selling these days. Folk want to go up and carry on and not, they don't let it breathe. They don't let it digest. It's, it's a dying art for man. But I think it's actually in, in recent years it's make, kind of started to kind of go better again. Do you think, Rob? Maybe I, I don't think, know. I think so, aye. I think it's fair yeah. to say. Um, I think Seth Rollins is a really good seller. You know? um, Seth, I have to say as well that I mean, we can get really... This is something the listeners need to realise here. When we're doing these lists, you're having to keep it... We're, um, we're trying to keep it um, something that you can uh, that you can properly engage with, so we're not hitting out with, like, Japanese wrestlers and all. We're not saying, like, Magnum TA, for example, right, was the total package, man, and he, he sold beautifully. He Magnum TA is one of the best sellers of all time and all that, but we're not hitting out with all the obscure stuff. We're not... We'll not try to, we're, listen, we're no marks. We're not selling ourselves in that way, right? I'm going to give you some, some things you can go and check out in the network. Right, let's see what the punters are saying. Chris says, The Rock selling a Stone Cold Stunner was priceless. Yes. Yep. HBK selling Irish whips into the turnbuckle, always going over the top rope. Aye. Jim says, Mr. Perfect was a brilliant seller. Sometimes went over the top with it, but you loved seeing him getting his boys booted all over the ring. Very <laughs> true. Um, Dan says, Brock Lesnar, when he wants he can make anyone look amazing. Good shout, Dan. Very nice that you've mentioned Brock Lesnar there. Ian says, Shawn Michaels or Dolph Ziggler, but most recently I've loved Ortiz from AEW selling. 
Uh, Paul says, my boy, Lex. My boy. He's constant grunts and shouting, ow, after every move. Kyle says, there are some amazing sellers in the business, but MJF can make a simple slap look like the Hulk just smashed his head in. Kenny Omega also makes everyone look strong, whoever he wrestles. If you go back to his matches with Jericho and AEW and NJPW, of course, I mean, Kenny wrestled so long in Japan that, you know, and a lot of Japanese wrestling matches are big sell fests. Do you know what I mean? Big sell fests. No, I want to say as well that one of my favourite um, matches in terms of selling and it, and it was because it was over the top bad no bad selling over the top cartoonish selling was that fucking Shawn Michaels and Hulk Hogan match I will oh, watch fuck. that any day of the week that yeah. match to see Shawn Michaels selling the moves with Hulk Hogan it's the funniest thing <laughs> it's the best isn't it it's the funniest thing in the world and I know people go some people go I hate that match because Shawn's just it's just, che course. just cheating the fans when he's taking the piss like that Sean, the way I read that, right, see when I saw that match the first time, the way I saw it was, what Sean Michaels is doing here is he is selling the way you would sell in a classic Hulk Hogan match for back in the day. That's how people worked Hogan back in the day. That's how people worked Hogan back then. That's how they sold when Hulkamania was running wild. You know what I mean? So it was a beautiful throwback. I love that match. It's so funny. It's, so, it's also taking the pass as well, but it was so funny. Uh, Kev says, Randy Orton sells better than Del Boy at the moment. Yes, right. Randy Orton's great, man. Special mention to Brock Lesnar and his feud with Drew. JB says, Flair, all day, every day. Good seller. Very good seller. Gregor says, Rick Rude selling an atomic drop. <laughs> Always funny. Love that. Liam says, come on to fuck. Clearly, Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning paved the way for overselling. The man was ahead of his time. Like, I mean, I don't like it being called overselling, though. It was just athletic, athletic, um, high-impact selling. Willie says, Brock Lesnar, I never really noticed it until his match with Daniel Bryan, but Brock made him look like a legitimate threat and almost had me believing Bryan was going to win. He's definitely the best I've seen at selling in the past decade. See Brock Lesnar sometimes, a guy that big, right, and that strong, when he gets all fucking wobbly legs on him and stuff, when he does that kind of selling. Stumbles and... Like, it's like a boxer going down. It's aye. like seeing a boxer starting to go down. It's fucking dynamite, man. It's so exciting. Before his ass. Aye, it's his ass, that kind so, of idea. I love that. Aye, it's so exciting, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um... That thing where when there's a Lesnar match and then it just gets to that point where there's a bit of selling where it's like, oh, he's, he's hung him, he's hung him. You know what I mean? It's beautiful. Uh, Alan says, I think guys like Carlito Ziggler and John Morrison's were always good at selling and if anything, it cost them. They made other people look too good. Stephen McCabe says, King of Scotland, Peter Lowell has to be up there. Peter Lowell has to be up there. <laughs> what? For selling fucking, selling modern Rasmussen for 200k is brilliant to watch each time. <laughs> and Gredo, you pride yourself in your selling, but who's been the best at selling for you? Right, here's, here's a good one. Here's a good one because see, um, see the wee boot, right? Oh, fuck I. No, that depends a lot. It doesn't depend. It, 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 you're wanting a good selling job with that, right? Uh, you're wanting somebody to take it like they're taking a shotgun to the head, right? You want a, a, a you know, a Lesnar um, take, taking the move after. You want, you want that kind of hoot. Who did it for you and you, who, who disappointed you? I don't know if anybody's disappointed in me, but if you're going to ask me the best guy that I've been in the ring for selling, 100% it's got to be Drew again. Drew was perfect at selling things, and I, and I learned a lot for the way he sold as well, and his he footwork, the way he'd move, and the way he'd use his hair and whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose there's anybody that's never... I mean, I, I suppose when I watched back that match with Drew, I just think that... I don't think we should have finished on a wee bit. I think there's so many folk watching. It's not the strongest thing ever. It's. I think it's a good finish. I yeah, so. I what worked for me that finish. So. Also, there's yeah. neat. I mean, it's. I think it's beautiful as well when a guy like Drew, a guy like that selling sells well. It's like there's no ego in that. You know what I mean? It's just totally like oh, this is fucking hurting me. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. another thing, man. I remember um, when the the fiend was fighting? Who was he fighting again? Um, when the fiend was at Goldberg, and he was just fucking sandbagging him and no selling right and all that. I don't know. He can, he can another, fuck off, man. Another thing as well is like what I do all the time is hearing my flip flop and fly flip flip flop and fly with the dusties. The boom, right. boom, mm -hmm. boom, and it annoys me. I always fuck. It. It's funny when I wrestle somebody that's maybe not had much experience. I'll be hitting them and they're just kind of standing there with their face pointed out as if they say, "Right, go," and they take it and they wait in the next one, next one. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. I'm like fucking move your feet. Boom. Aye. So I always remember that as well. Right, there's a. Uh, uh, fucking jester man there was a match Battle Roy and Kelly Grant Hall 
And uh, Sakib Ali, who's a wrestler in BCW, who is brilliant, by the way. And I, I loved working with him until we had a match in East Cobray once. It fell flat in his ass, but it was probably because of me, right? And I take it out of him and it was bad anyway. Uh, I just remember being in a battle royal with, with Sakib and Jack Jester and there's other folk in the ring. And I just turned around and I seen Jester hit Sakib. <laughs> Nothing happened. So the next time I went, all you heard was Jester going, Sell, Sakib, sell! <laughs> Sell, Sakib, sell! <laughs> you still got that jester character going yeah, on yeah. as well. Sell! <laughs> Fucking brilliant, man. Uh... <laughs> sell, Sakib, sell! Beautiful selling pal. I love you talk about that all day. Terry Funk kills another one. He's a great oh, seller. Aye. Oh my He's God, Terry Funk could sell like hell. Right. Uh... He'd probably still be good at it, you know? He'd fucking... I'm sure I've seen him doing stuff where with AIW in Cleveland and he's like what age is he now man he must be fucking 70 odd and he still makes it he still makes it look real because he's an old guy aye some boy any. some boy can't take him anywhere. that'll be you that'll be you soon 40 years time <laughs> Wrestling Daft merch you want it you got it you can have a Wrestling Daft t-shirt hoodie phone cover trucker cap or one of a range of Grado inspired bum bags at shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash Mr Wrestling Daft do take out the mister on there you'll find designs such as Alexa who is Graham Steveley Alexa who is Graham Steveley she's not even listening she doesn't even work anymore um, I'm a mark crud chips cheese and donor meat and I'm a wrestler tea. and you can even get a face mask to wear at the shops so check out our range at shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash wrestling daft now or check out the links on our Facebook page or Twitter at wrestling daft Now, it's that point in the show where we jump in the wrestling daft Lorian and hit 88 miles an hour to head back and watch a classic match. Grado chose a match and he went for Samoa Joe versus Kenta Kabashi from Ring of Honor July 2005. Did you pick a bloody Kenta Kabashi match when I wasn't here? Were you? No, I'm sure we done this two weeks. Oh, right. I yeah. get it. This is what you did. You did uh, you Texas to finish the show. I did pick that because I can't remember why. Do you remember, John, why exactly I picked that? We were, we were talking about Jodie Flash uh, match and you said you were right into it at that time, so you wanted to pick one similar. I, I think it's because I went through that, that kind of fast-paced dancing style and then I kind of hit, like, I'm, I think I saw some more Joe versus Kabashi, which made me buy loads of Noah DVDs. And, but anyway, I picked the, 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 the Joe Kabashi match because I felt like, it was in a kind of setting where it had never been before, if you get what I mean. We yeah. had, you'd never had that kind of, It was a New York crowd. It was fiery. And you're used to, like, the Japanese crowd is completely different to that type of fan base. It was different to see that sort yeah. of scenario. So I thought, I've seen the match, by the way. What a match it is. Great. I think five stars as well. What a match. And a... I always like. I remember an interview with Kabashi where he was just like he loved doing matches outside Japan, and he was just constantly like kind of shocked that people knew even who he was. Kind of, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, he, just what a guy, man! And Samoa Joe as well just looked. Samoa Joe would have had an. Is he Samoa Joe if he'd been in all Japan in fucking nineteen ninety three? You know what I mean? Or, or, or he'd have been over there then all Japan, Noah stuff. He, he, would, he, he, what, he could have fit in anywhere. He could right. have fit in anywhere a guy like him. You know what I mean? Really? Samoa Joe's a great example, I think. Yeah, a guy who could probably have worked for any promotion. Mm-hmm. Worked for any promotion. I could do anything, really. Aye. <clears throat> aye. He's like the... He's he's much like you. Can he's a bit like me, man. We've seen build. But Paul says... Same bitch that's... <laughs> Paul says, I watched this with Japanese commentary. He sounded exciting for every move, excited for every move. This is missing these days. What a slap at the beginning. These guys beat the living shit out of each other. The crowd's reaction to the ending sequence was something else. So Rab's picking next. What are we going for? Rab's me, by the way. Um, right, well, it has to be because I'm just, after talking about it, I'm in the mood for watching it again. I believe it's, is it SummerSlam 2005? Sean and Hogan. Hogan and I, it's so five. SummerSlam 2005. That's You'll a good show. On your WWE Network, and I want you to watch. Why don't we watch the show? Let's watch the show. You can skip some matches if you want, but let's just check out the show. But make sure you do watch on SummerSlam 2005, Hulk Hogan versus Shawn Michaels. Just, 
just to enjoy it again and remember all the background, all the chat was that Shawn Michaels and Hogan just weren't they getting on and all of that and Michaels didn't want to um, lie down for Hogan and and uh, and but we don't know what's true. We don't. It might just all be talk, but just enjoy the selling in that match. Well, some interesting matches to go back in that. You've got Edge and Matt Hardy at the time, which was pretty big. But I mean, I'm sure I remember that going like five minutes, which was a wee bit disappointing. But that was, was that after all the. Was I think that, so. Uh, you screwed Matt. Yeah. That type of idea. Yeah. 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 Um, you've got Kurt Angle and Eugene. I love Eugene. Cena and Jericho. You've got Orton and Taker. You've got Batista and JBL. Chris Benoit against Orlando Jordan. Remember him to get the last ever match right. that Ultimate Warrior ever had in Italy with Orlando Jordan. How weird is that? I remember as well, old Rosie, man. I, that was a sin that happened to him. But I remember my mom saying, There's a, I can remember just my mom going like that. I'm watching Celebrity uh, Fat Camp. This American version. There's a wrestler on it. And I'm going, Who's on that? I can't think. I think it's a guy, Rosie. Rosie. And I'm going, Who the fuck is Rosie? Totally forgot what his name was. And I watched right. the back of the Wesley Rose, I forgot he kind of existed, but sad. Rest in peace. Um, let's pick our listener of the week. Who will we pick as our listener of the week? Um, there was a... What about uh, Jordy and his stories about COVID? No, I, 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 he gets running up, but for me, I think Wesley's got to get it again for her, her dreaming about wrestling the big show and getting chased by Bram out steel chair. <laughs> Maybe, but I do like Stephen, who hit out with Jesse the antibody Ventura, though. That was perfect. So what do you think? Westy or Stephen? Westy's had it before, didn't you? Westy's had it before. Let's get you Stephen. Let's get right, Stephen's start on something new. We need, we need to start a rocket to somebody else for a change. Westy's already been. Westy's already kind of up in the main event. We need to get we need to get some new blood up there. I feel but, sorry for COVID guy that's prob- that probably did spend a good... 15 20 minutes on that COVID story, you know. Yeah, but he's a future prospect. He's he a just prospect. needs to keep he just needs to keep uh, sending stuff in. He's a future prospect. He's, he's a one to good, watch. He has he's got a good chance doing the line, but it's time for some new blood. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that is going to go to was it Richard, was it? No, uh, Steven. Yeah. Steven oh, was Steven's, Steven. <laughs> Steven's a new blood. Uh, Westy is the what was it? She's a vet. Or something? She's what a vet. It? Well the next week we have um Nah, in fact I made. Can I say Halloween related wrestler puns? <laughs> nah. Yeah, why not? That'd be yeah. good. <laughs> Send us in some. But it's no Halloween. It won't be Halloween yet, though, will it? It'll be the week after we want. Right, okay. week after. after. He's just two weeks. I like the puns, man. I think they're dead funny. Um, what do you think? Or so, what, you mean like Skeleton Benjamin? <laughs> <laughs> Right, that's okay. it for this week's show. Please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple or get us in wherever you get your podcast. Plus, remember, we now go twice a week. You can catch us on a Friday, and you can catch a Mark's podcast on a Tuesday. Also, remember to get on our Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash wrestling daft to check out the video version. And why not buy yourself a t-shirt? Shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash wrestling daft. And thanks so much for all the support. He's are keeping us going in these difficult times, and we really appreciate it. We know times are tough out there as well, so we appreciate all the help you're giving us. Um, speak to you soon. Grado, Garber Odin. It's your cell up the road, up the road. Up yourself, up yourself, up yourself, up yourself, up yourself, up yourself. Up yourself. John, what's your catchphrase again? I've got fuck off. Is it? Is your catchphrase? Oh, Lana, I love you. I love you, Lana. Keep, my, you my catchphrase in the market marks is keep marking out. Is it? That is. Well, is see it? It as well then. Jeez, oh. Did right. you know you listened to it? Well, of course. I forgot. So it is. Uh, so as you see it every episode. Right, well, you didn't start saying it until a few episodes in, though. No? Right, That's so, great, though. Sorry, I've just... Yourself up the road. Is it, was it Jimmy Wang? Was that his name? <laughs> Jimmy oh, Wang. Who? Who's who, Jimmy Wang? Was he in WCW, Jimmy Wang? Hi, hi, hi. Jimmy Fang. Oh, very good. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Two Count Dracula. What? Two Count Dracula. <laughs> Forget that one. Two oh, right, I, I, I get it, I get it. You count Dracula. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else you get? That'll be us. <laughs> Here once more. I don't know, what are you like today? It's just two minutes. Million dollar wolf, man. <laughs> what, but... Hey, hold on, hold on. What? <laughs> Big pop a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a melter. Let's see.
Oh. Give, give me, give me one. Oh, give me one, man. Hold on. Um, just try to hit fun Halloween words. Um, oh. Gene Witchsky. <laughs> nah, that's terrible. Gene Witchsky. Well, witches, isn't it? Witch. Oh my god. Nah, that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Any more? Up the road. Hey, okay. <laughs> Grabs. Let's know, it just, next week. It gets you going, doesn't it? it really nah, gets it gets you, you going. Let's say, right. Up the road. Night, night. And, right, and John. Keep marking out. <laughs> Keep marking out, man. I love that. It's fucking <laughs> Audio Frontier.